，什么没认识这个样，我别说你找那个事，叫人家不高兴，我不我不高兴不高兴。Take another person as your sister or your brother. You don't have to be selfish to think of yourself. Think of other people and the coming generation. A gente tem lutar, a gente tem de lutar por tudo que a gente quer na vida. Que é o que eu digo sempre para meus filhos, sabe, meus filhos? Quando tenho a pata, smile ora para nga, smile ora para nga. The small things really mean much more than the larger things. That's what being a human in the human race is all about. Hi, I'm June Sarpong, um, and I'm very excited uh, to announce uh, my new book, uh, Diversify, uh, which will be coming out uh, next year, May 2017, uh, 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 on HQ, which is part of the HarperCollins family. What I hope um, this book will do uh, is help um, spark some conversations that probably need to have been had uh, a very long time ago. Um, in terms of diversity and issues surrounding uh, race and prejudice and intolerance um, and inequality in general, we're really uncomfortable broaching those subjects. And until we do, um, we will continue to have the situation that we now see ourselves in. Um, I look at this from a slightly different perspective um, as a woman of color, as the daughter of immigrants, um, as somebody from a working class background. Um, obviously, I understand firsthand uh, what it feels like to be discriminated against or to be underestimated um, and, and you know, all of the things that are associated with that. But I think what makes this book slightly different is I don't only look at this issue from that perspective. What I feel is that we all have levels of intolerance and prejudice within us. Um, and so often uh, we don't even realize it's there. You know, these unconscious biases that sort of um, motivate us and, um, and impact the way that we behave with each other. And what we're doing, what I'm doing with this book is really kind of looking at myself, um, but looking at other rising in general, whatever that other is for you. Um, and what are the steps uh, for helping us to better understand uh, each other? Uh, I think that intolerance uh, is a virus um, and we all are infected to whatever varying degree, um, some of us worse than others. Um, it's almost looking at it like a common cold. So, you know, do you have a common cold or do you have full-blown pneumonia? Um, and the question is, how do we find a cure? But then how do we also inoculate the next generation so they don't carry on uh, the same uh, levels of limited um, beliefs? Um, but also, I think that there are lots of positives. So in terms of the, the case and the argument that I put across, it's really looking at it from three uh, perspectives. Uh, the first uh, is the moral argument in that, of course, having a diverse and inclusive society is the right thing to do. Uh, it's the fair thing to do. Um, the second uh, is from a social perspective in terms of how much diversity um, enriches our culture and moves humanity forward. And then the third is just the economic argument, you know, it's good for the bottom line. And I think in an ever changing world where there are countries that we once ruled, who will one day have bigger economies than us, um, the only way really to compete uh, is to make sure that everybody who can contribute uh, is given the opportunity to do so. I've been very fortunate uh, with my work uh, to travel all around the world um, and has also spent a lot of time uh, campaigning uh, on uh, issues relating to poverty and, and women's rights in particular. And the thing that gets me out of bed in the morning is how you level the playing field. How do you create uh, a fairer, more equal society? We should focus on the things that we have in common much more than what separates us and the stuff that does separate us we should celebrate as opposed to being frightened of. Um, I was very lucky 
to uh, have worked with Jo Cox. Uh, we worked together on a, a women's rights project. And Jo really did embody that whole philosophy of more in common. And I do hope that some of that uh, will rub off uh, with Diversify. I'm very excited uh, to have Anthony Heath uh, from Loughfield College at Oxford University uh, on board uh, doing uh, some of the research for the book. Uh, he and his team will be providing uh, me with the most up-to-date data. Um, I am not an academic and luckily Anthony is. Um, and the wonderful thing about some of the work that Anthony and his team um, conduct at, at Oxford is what they say is, you know what? On balance, and I think this is actually true, in the UK we are far more advanced um, on this issue than many other countries in the world. And if we continue at the pace that we're going, you know, we will be at a certain place in such and such a time and it will add X amount to our GDP. But what Anthony says is that actually there are steps that we can take that will accelerate this pace um, and as a result we will all benefit. Um, and I don't see how that can be a bad thing. So Anthony, tell me about Nuffield College uh, and the work that you do there. Yes, we, at, at Nuffield College in, in my new centre, mm -hmm. we're trying to tackle major contemporary social problems and we're trying to do it to the, the highest academic standards but at the same time to produce results that are accessible and reach policy makers and a wider public. Uh, and we're trying to focus on contemporary issues like inequality, uh, discrimination, prejudice, um, the problems faced by children in care, really looking at vulnerable and neglected groups in order to highlight what the problems are and try to understand why they're there. So why is um, uh, diversity uh, important for society in terms of making it a better place? Well, I think in a nutshell, my focus would be on providing equality of opportunity for people irrespective of their, their gender, their ethnic origin, uh, their social class position, whether they've got a disability or not. Um, because in a way, that is what Britain stands for, uh, equality of opportunity for everybody. So it's a matter of, of living up to our own values, but it's also intensely practical, because if we don't give people equality of opportunity, it means we're wasting people's talents. So there's an economic case for giving equality of opportunity. And if we give equality of opportunity, we, we release the talents, we make everybody better off, but we'll also encourage uh, greater participation, people will not feel resentful, so we'll, we'll also contribute to a more cohesive, to a stronger society. So I think it wins on all counts. It wins morally, economically, but also in terms of, of social progress. Why is a book like this important? I think it's very important not to keep academic work in a little private silo for people like myself to debate. We've got to get the research out there. Your book, with your communication skills, is going to reach a much wider audience than ever I could hope to. And it's also going to resonate with people because you can draw on your experience and you can explain why these issues matter. And you can show, by example, how we can make things better. So although it's, it's great to see women like Margaret Thatcher and Theresa May get to the top in politics, um, or uh, Obama and Sadiq Khan, um, we shouldn't suppose, we, sh we mustn't allow ourselves to be misled to supposing that everything is all right uh, at the top because there's a great shortage uh, of uh, women and black men still on the boards of companies, uh, in the cabinet, look at Cameron's first cabinet. Um, so there's a lot of progress that still needs to be made. I think the problems of young men without work uh, whether it's black men or white men, is very, very troubling for society and it's troubling for our future. Because essentially what we find is that not having a job when you're young leads, leaves a scarring effect. It reduces your prospects of getting work later on, 
because you you don't have the work experience, you have the stigma of say long spells of unemployment. Uh, unemployment we also know from from research has wider consequences, not just on the person but on their family members. Uh, it increases divorce rates. It increases uh, um, mental ill health uh, among partners. It um, it affects children's their, their children's opportunities. So. Youth unemployment, uh, whether it, it's white working class or young black men, is very bad news and it's storing up a time bomb, if you like, of um, disaffection or disillusionment. And it can be apathy, it doesn't have to be violent protest, uh, but it's storing up problems which will come back to haunt later generations. Um, one of the stories that I uh, reference uh, in the book uh, is uh, the Anansi uh, tale. Um, my parents are from Ghana, and in Ghana, uh, folklore is very a big is a big part of our culture. Um, Anansi starts out as the lowest um, animal uh, in the animal kingdom, and he manages to somehow convince the sky god um, to sell him uh, the stories of the world, the wisdom of the world, and as a result, becomes a king. Um, and the reason why I reference the Anansi tale is because I feel it represents really what's needed uh, to create a more fairer and more equal society. So in the story, the sky god gives Anansi um, the same opportunity um, as what he had given much worthier candidates. Um, fortunately, even though the sky god doesn't believe Anansi will succeed, Anansi believes he'll succeed himself. In a nutshell, what that story represents is if you give somebody uh, equal opportunity or at least access uh, to equal opportunity and then they in turn believe in themselves, anything is possible. Uh, and I really do believe that. Um, so what I hope uh, this book will do is um, uh, make us all think um, and I hope that it will help us to start having conversations that are really uncomfortable but need to be had.